Hey guys, today I'm transforming my carport into a screened in porch. And the first step is to build this facade behind me that faces the road and that's gonna give me curb appeal and a lot of privacy. The plan here is really simple. I have a support post. This is structural, can't touch it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a laser line here and reframe here so I can put in a door, a couple more windows that are exact same size as the ones out front. And then I'm gonna put the vinyl siding on here so that it looks like an extension of the house from the street. That increases the curb appeal and that makes this house look absolutely massive. It also adds 10 feet to this living space area here, which makes it functional. Now it'll be big enough that you can actually invite some friends over and have some fun enjoying the cool summer nights. So let's just jump right into it. Well, so here we are in Florida and I brought a bucket of hand tools and my favorite drill from DeWalt, right? But I didn't bring all of my power tools. So part of the budget for this project is purchasing tools. This makes it very real for any of you homeowners out there who are starting from scratch considering these projects. I went over to Harbor Freight to buy some of the cheapest tools in town because I've been hearing in the comments section for seven years. Guys, go to Harbor Freight, the tools are great. And I have no experience to argue with that. So I decided to buy some Harbor Front tools. I got a $109 10 inch chop saw and I got a corded grinder for like 40 bucks. Now listen, not a bad gig, right? We're gonna use these tools to be able to get all of this work done. Now, so since we're gonna be building our wall here, we wanna have it look pretty from the inside, let's say. So we're using a white siding and white aluminum extrusion. So we're using helicopters. <laughs> Seriously, guys? We will be using white aluminum extrusion. Um, this original three inch post here, they come every eight feet and they're structure, they're what's carrying the roof load. So we can't lose these, but what we can do, we can paint them white. So we are going to paint this one white. We are going to remove all the other brown accessories and we'll set them up to paint them in a paint station. But since I can't remove this post, I have to paint it in place. So. We're going to just cover up and protect the ceiling from a little bit of overspray here. And then I'm going to get my paint can out and I'm going to spray paint the post. So what I'll do is I'll take out all the other framing, then I'm going to spray the post, and then we're going to drop a line. Let's do this. The assembly here is really quite simple. Um, there's L brackets with self-tapping screws, and then there's a two inch screw holding this bar to the three inch post. 50 years later, it still comes out. This one is not playing nice. You can see that with this drill, because it's in a tight space, I, ha I have them on an angle, which means these old rusty heads, I'm gonna just strip them every time. So I'm putting in a bit extension so that I can straighten that out a little bit more. Hopefully that'll reduce or maybe even eliminate any more problems. Oh yeah. Nice. And again, these tracks, they may be salvageable, but the brackets and the screws, no matter what I do with the tracks, I'm gonna buy new ones. I'm not gonna try to paint all my screws and brackets. Now, the reason I'm being so careful with this, this is solid aluminum extrusion, which means it can be painted. It also means that this little track here is designed for a screen with a spline, just like a screen door or a screen window, okay? So you can actually build and configure your own screen porch with this product. Um, eight foot post runs about 25 bucks. If I can't clean it up and paint it cost effective wise, then I'll replace it, because for 25 bucks, it might be better to work with a brand new one. But we're gonna try to save this product if we can. I mean, after all, once you throw it in the garbage, it's not aluminum anymore, it's just landfill. Still gonna run some dust here. Give this a quick stuff. Now obviously that doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna come back with some of those little rectangle white trims to finish framing this out. If the other ones don't paint up. But honestly, whew, I need to attach one post to this to get started.
Gotta love trim clad, eh? This spray can version claims to dry in 15 minutes, which is why I'm using it. It's not the most cost effective way to paint. But if I like the finished look, I'll go pick up a mini roller and the roll on version, and we'll hit the rest of the metal. All right, now we'll let that dry. While we're waiting for that to dry, we'll grab the laser level and we'll start marking out the rest of the wall. You want to do uh, five guys? Five guys is fine, sure. Okay, here we go. You want a cheeseburger, fries, and uh, Coke? No, no cheese. Okay, bacon. No, just burger. All right, so here we are. Here's my new white extruded aluminum. Um, if you're going to be using screening product, then this is where the spline goes. So make sure it's facing the right direction. Because I'm adding siding here, I'm going to make this invisible by facing it towards the siding. We're going to screw this right to the existing post. Now, up here, in order to identify my line, I want to try to get it in the middle. All right? So I'm going to mark both sides. Here's my mark. That represents the outside. So here's a trick so that you can figure out where the line should go. Nothing is square, okay? It's impossible to know. But you do have a roof that has ceiling panels and they have lines. If you build your wall in line with a ceiling panel, which is about as close to square as you're going to find around here, then at least visually there's nothing else in this space to tell you if you're square or not. So having that line up is going to be paramount. So what we're going to do is drop a laser line because I'm adding siding and trim to the front side, I'm going to add one and a half inches, which is the distance from the middle of that groove to the front of where I want my post. I want to leave a little of this profile showing. Okay, that's it. And yeah, that is going to work out really well. Or do I want to go flush off the back and then my siding finishes? I like that better. I'm actually going to change my mind. I'm going to go flush off the back corner so that my siding finishes off this corner. I like that. So my gap now is, is exactly one inch from here to the front. Well, that's a lot of marks. One inch is the number. <laughs> Let's do this thing here. All right, we're just going to come over here, throw it into that crack across the room. And I'm just going to keep adjusting my location here until it's in the gap. That's close. There we go. I'm right in my gap. And all I have to do now, remove all of this. And then just put some marks on here. We know we're going to be to here, plus one inch. OK. I'm going to add my inch. Now I'm going to take my laser the other direction so I can mark my wall. Because our challenge here is, this takes forever. There we go. So here's our siding. Behind the siding, just like in our window video, and if you haven't seen it, we'll put a link in the video description because we replaced the five windows in the front of the house. That was awesome. Behind the siding, there is another building facade, a weatherproof layer that has also got an aluminum face on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut through the siding here. Okay? This is my red line. There we go. I'm going to get my saw out and I'm going to cut all the way through this. I'm going to install a vinyl siding inside corner. If this is where this facade finishes, it's important for us to know how this is going to work. Let's take a look at this profile real quick while we're on it. Okay. This is an inside corner. All right. And if you take a look at this really quick, you can see that this is the thickness of the, of the siding. And then that's the thickness, there's a gap difference. So if I'm finishing here, right, I kind of line this corner up with the cut, then I have to actually cut my siding open back here. All right? That way I have to add myself that extra three eighths of an inch for this profile so that I can actually finish it and be in the right location. Okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to trace out my line. I'm going to add the 3 8 and then we're going to cut it. Okay, here we go. Here's our laser line. Okay, and just to make this visibly easy to 
we're gonna go like that. But remember, my profile needs an extra 3 eighths. And there's a little mercy. And in the south, the heat is gonna make this expand. So since the trim requires a quarter, instead of going 3 eighths, let's add a whole half inch. Let's really double down on the forgiveness factor because we don't want to have our siding buckling when it gets hot, okay? So here's our new line. And we're gonna go like this, just identify it. All right, here we go, loving that. Okay, so we gotta draw this all the way down or we're gonna be completely lost when it's time to cut this open. Here we go. All right, now for cutting this siding, we're gonna use a grinder. This is a continuous rim blade for ceramic or porcelain, okay? It's about 20 bucks. Yeah, it's great. It, it'll cut through this by burning through the vinyl. There are no teeth, okay? It's a diamond bit for cutting through stone, but on skin, it's actually quite safe. So this is how I roll. And I'm not safety stupid, I'm safety second. So, here we go. That was interesting. Now, if you're a fan of the channel, you guys know, you always think end from the beginning, okay? You need to have the plan to finish. It's one thing to cut the wall open, but look at this siding goes to where the old wall was, and then it turns back into the old original facade from the 70s. Now, I have a J trim there, okay, that it's gonna be exposed, but instead of taking all of this off and redoing all the siding to make it perfect, because it's just a Florida room, we're gonna add another J trim and extend that siding finish the rest of that room off so it looks very intentional. Because right now, it looks like a patchwork quilt. I'm not a big fan. So, I'm also gonna need a piece of J-trim on the other side here. Okay, so let's say, and I'm using this because this is not gonna be visible as my marking line. I put the post on my line where the post is gonna go. I wanna put J-trim over here as well. So, I don't wanna cut nice and tight. There's no room for the J-trim to go. I'm going to cut there, all right? So we have to do a second line now. So I'm going to cut here to there and here nice and thick like. I'm going to move my post over, bam. There's my line. Okay, and then we can lift it up here. Get that right in there. All right, we'll cut that out completely. And then we'll be able to get our trims in and then we can install our post. All right, let's do this. It's coming off again. Well, that's what you get for 35 bucks, eh? But you know what? Did the job. Oh, that's that little bit of foam insulation again, eh? Yeah, that's not of any value here. Now we want to identify if there's any nailing surface for the siding that actually is near this area that prevents me from pulling it apart. I need to get about one and a half inches in. Ah, here we go. Well, I'll be. That is going to work out really beautiful. Whew, so what I need for my inside corner is a measurement from existing to existing because we're going to match up the siding lines and then do a different kind of skirt to go to the bottom. 94 inches. 94. <laughs> Brilliant. Perfect every time. Do I need to say it? No. It's just a matter of getting all this in behind. And yep, I know it's a different color. We've been through this. We're gonna be painting all of the existing siding. Okay. This is just about applying pressure and intentionally warping the shape of the trim and then releasing. Got to sandwich it in between the siding and that insulation layer. There we go. Okay, that's trim number one. Let's confirm. Yep, just enough room. 
We need a J trim, 94 inches. Now all I gotta do is cut a post the actual height, and then I can screw that to the existing facade in the wall. We are in business. Okay, the height that we wanna go to, we're just gonna cut this right to the ceiling. And leave a little bit hair shy. We can always use a little bit of white silicone, close in the gaps. It's gonna be difficult to get all the angles here perfect. 105 and a half. All right. Okay. There's our mark. Okay. Most table saws have the same thing. They're about three inches off the ground. So you cut a couple of two by fours and you can block them up just to hold everything nice and level. Let's just get this cut. Carbide blade, aluminum, always wins. Nice and slow. Take out our temporary sport. Put in our actual, actual height here. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill three holes with a 1 8 bit just on the front just so that I don't have so much difficulty tying my three inch screws in. Well, you know what? No reason to work above my head, eh? Just for good measure. When you use a laser level to do your framing and make all your marks and then you cut accordingly, you don't even need to use one of these because everything is always level. There's just no option. <laughs> so. Um, using the laser to mark it out and then cutting on your line eliminates the need to be using this as you move along. Just thought I'd show you. It is level. Here we go with our screw. Number two. And number three. Now the metal is two inches, the screw is three. Uh, there's a thin aluminum facade. And then in some cases even structure. But the aluminum facade on this building is tightened down with screws. Um, every 16 inches. So you can see my metal con being concave there under pressure. That's not going anywhere, okay? And for what we're doing, we're just building a, a facade wall. It's not structural, it's like an interior wall. And that's more than enough. Okay, now, uh, we need to do the other side and we gotta get one cut up into the ceiling. Once we have the outside frame, we'll drop a couple more posts. We'll start sticking in doors and windows. <laughs> this is a move real quick. But I think first it's time for a lunch break. Now we're gonna dry fit it, and if it fits nice, we'll pre-drill some holes, and we'll stick it in. Am I flush? Okay, I got a screw head there. Come on, pain in the ass. All right. Oh yeah, I got screw holes. Now you can see I've got these bolt heads. They're actually in my way. So this is the front. I'm making contact right here. I'm making contact underneath. Underneath is buried, so I can cut it out away. This will be covered in siding. I can cut that away. So what I want to do is I want to cut through here and through here up to this point only. So the inside stays looking clean. A little tricky, but. Come out from the other side here. Okay. Perfect. Now, we pre-drill. All right. So let's just, just go through this. We're gonna to try to mimic what we see here. The, the thought is the door should be in the middle of our wall. And then each side, we're gonna have a 30 by 53 window. And the pieces on the sides are roughly 42 to 48 inches. 
if we can identify the middle and then we'll measure out from there to put both of our posts for the door then it'll be easier to fill in the framing. To do that we realize that we have this door frame it's like a patio door and these screws need to go into actual framing material. Since our posts are two inch wide it should not be an issue. So we'll take the actual thickness of the door which is plus some hardware 36. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of mercy because we have so much ability to screw. We're going to go with 36 and a half as our hole. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. Do some quick measurements here. On a 124, the center line is 62. Okay, so our liner, center line is 62. This little spot right here. And then we want to go 36 and a half, which is here. Half of that is 18 and a quarter. Put that on the mark and our posts are roughly here and here. We don't know exactly where the posts line up. What we're gonna do is pull out our laser again, drop that line from the edge of the header and put that, trace that line down here. Just play around with this for a couple seconds. Well, that is pretty much perfect right there. This represents the front and then the interior. And that's my right angle. And you can hold your hand here and you can see the, the line is right here. Okay, that's my post. Now to install these two posts, I can just measure off that framing there. 80 and a quarter, roughly level. And then I'm going to measure the back side. Okay, that's roughly level. And I'm getting a measurement to about the middle of the post. I'm gonna cut my post off, lay it here and then trace the angle and I'm gonna put a level on it and make a mark. That doesn't look too bloody level to me. Does that look level to you? The floor and then the... Oh, I know. All right, so here we are. We're gonna cut that angle on it. Should be at seven degrees. Yeah, that actually worked. I know this is good. Okay, I'm gonna make that mark. Okay, I'm gonna use the self-tapping screws here now to put on that L bracket on the mark. This is how easy this is. Now, one of the other tricks is because we're going with a 36 and a half inch hole, I can create a header that's 36 and a half and use it as a spacer. So now I can set my next pipe on this corner have this as a spacer installed, know exactly where my line is. That is going to make my life easy. 36 and a half, right? This is an awesome construction style. I'm really loving it. Now we gotta get measurement from the ground to where the header should go. Okay. One oh one. Here's my measurement to the point of contact. Line that. Wow. What in the hell happened here? Matt? Yeah. This doesn't work if you don't anchor the first post. All right. All right, so what we're gonna use is a, a 3 16th Tapcon screw. This is it, it's white coated, okay? and it has the uh, T25 bit. We got a pre-drill into the concrete. I picked up this uh, $60 Craftsman hammer drill. I wasn't sure if it was the cheapest on the market, but at 60 bucks for the cord, I've used this before in our how to build a basement subfloor series, and I just loved it. Simple as going to hammer. I marked my two spots, I'm gonna pre-drill the holes. Right? It's perfect every time. Oh. 
In addition, because it is a, um, a smaller head, I'm using a big flat washer on it just to make sure that we get really good contact. Get this on the on that, that corner location right there. And then use the self-tapping screw. There, now she's anchored. Now we'll anchor this one. Now because my floor has got a slope to it, and I've measured the height for this bar with a little extra room, I want to confirm my install. So we are going to set this door in place. Yeah, it definitely is on a slope. Okay, I have got a nice bit of a gap back here. Things are squared off. Lots of room for my door and so. Now, ah, that's confirmed. Secure the header in the mark, location that I marked, and then I'll attach the base with the tap cons. I like that. Now I'm gonna be building a skirt that goes from here to the floor. It's gonna be basically um, vertical pieces of soffit, and it's gonna be just a smooth flat soffit inside of J-Trim. We'll add that after the fact. What we wanna do now is think about the end from the beginning here. So that here is gonna be my first course of siding. Okay, now where do we want our window to start? It's 53 inches tall, so it's about that tall, that window. Would it make sense if the top of the window was around the same part as the top of the door? That's the question. You don't want it higher than the door, that'll look stupid. This gives at least a couple of courses of siding underneath before the window breaks into it. I think I like that. And if it's just a little bit shorter, that's fine too. So, in my mind, I'm like two pieces of siding, it's four pieces. If that's where my window starts, look for something horizontal, that's roughly level. Here's designing on the fly for you. That gets too tall, right? So I've got to make sure that I'm measuring off of this. We're going to put a crossbar for the top of the window the same as the top of the door. So 53 inches from here is here. That's exact. We don't want to go with exact, we want a little bit of wiggle. So throw an extra half an inch in. That'll represent my window. Same here, we'll go 53 and a half for my window. Here's a trick to confirm that this is all working because everything I'm measuring off is on one level. I'm gonna drop a laser line on both of these and then measure up to my mark and see if they're the same. Six, six, that works. So now we know when I put my framing in, straight across the header, off these marks and then down. My windows can sit right on top of that. I can install them level. Everything from here on in goes really smooth and simple. Now this is as simple as just cutting posts for the inside measurement, adding the brackets and then screwing it together. 41 and 5 eighths. This is all getting covered in siding, so let's not be afraid to use this as our template. 41 and a half. Well, that's remarkably symmetrical. Not bad being out an eighth of an inch over 12 feet, eh? This one should be 41 and a half, give or take. 41 and a half, that's how you know your level. Oh my goodness. 41 and 5 eighths, bam. Two and two. So now we're in the production mode. gap is a little bit bigger than I want it to be. I'm gonna need some kind of a shim down here. So I've got my hole a little bit bigger than I wanted to. Probably should have had this bar down a little bit more, but my screw hole here on the top of this fin is right near the edge. So I'm gonna shove a knife under each side of this window after I put it in and get that height established. And that'll become my process for the other window as well. Really it's as simple 
coming over here, splitting the difference with the hole, making it look pretty. And then I'm going to lift one side, drop it on my knife, lift the other side, drop it on my knife. There we go. Come back around the front, toss a couple of screws in here to hold it still. Okay, now it's not going anywhere. All right, now we can see this taking shape, right? And what we really need, now that we're looking at this, is this was good for support for the window. But when I'm putting on my door and then my siding, I need something behind here so that I can attach my siding, okay? Otherwise, everything's gonna be just floating behind the window, which isn't ideal. I wanna address something. I get a lot of questions about this. I understand the desire to wanna over-engineer everything when you're building. But if you're gonna be practical and you're gonna save your money, you gotta just understand the limitation you need to engineer too. So right now, this window, it's not going anywhere, all right? We're not creating a waterproofing system or a weatherproofing system. It's an outdoor three season room, basically. It's a concrete floor that's sloped away from the building. So if water penetrates this area, that's fine. The other wall is gonna be a screen porch for Pete's sake, all right? We're just creating a facade so that from the street, it looks like it's an addition on the house. And it's a little bit of privacy from all of the people walking up and down when you're having time alone. So there really is no reason to over-engineer here. Siding is gonna go behind. This is a brick mold, it's an extension. Okay, we're gonna have a J-trim here. We're gonna install all the siding. We're gonna attach it at the top so it's not gonna be able to pull apart. We're gonna show you all these tips and tricks. But you don't wanna start spending $300 in aluminum framing to add a stick every 12 inches and frame up the sides and all. It's okay, it's just siding, it's just a facade. It's gonna to hold together just fine, all right? So we're gonna call this side done. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna add one more stick right here underneath the middle to the ground, and it's not to carry the weight of the window. It's so that the siding has actually got some stability <laughs> because you don't wanna go fill in a 42 inch gap with nothing in behind it, all right? I might even go with two. I'm not even sure at this point, but I think one is gonna be plenty. Hey. <coughs> Uh, if I put the other window in first, it makes it very difficult to get this door out. Okay. So, because of the slope, because of the way this door is made, it comes in completely encased in a frame. So I want the frame on the ground on one side, right? And we're gonna throw a screw in that right away. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna lift this side of the door until it's in a level position. Because right now it's sitting on this concrete and it's twisted in the frame. So we're gonna throw a laser level on it. Let's have a look. See how wide it opens up. Okay, goes from quarter inch to a full inch. I think what I'm gonna do, just so that everybody else can see it on camera, because my green laser died today. All right, get an idea how bad that slope is, right? We're going to lift it until it looks like it's level. And that looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna throw in a screw and then double check it. It's a half. Yeah, I lifted it up a little bit too much. And that's okay. So what we're gonna do now, is take this one out. There, that is much better. Now it's just a matter of filling in all the rest of the locations. I think this rail is installed higher than the other one. All right, so what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just taking my window, I got it sitting in place, and I'm double checking my height. So I'm taking a two by two aluminum bar, set it across the tops. That all looks pretty darn consistent to me. At the end of the day, we're finishing with vinyl. Vinyl trim, vinyl siding. If you try to drive yourself crazy and make everything exactly perfect, you will do that exactly, drive yourself crazy. And then you're gonna make a mistake. Like walk away without putting screws in the window. 
and then it'll fall on your head. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and put it in place from here. What I want to do for the sake of symmetry is measure from the fin to something that's easy, like the frame of that door is eight inches. Okay, so I'm going to go from the door frame to the fin. I'm looking for eight inches for the sake of symmetry. If I can hold it in there, that'd be really nice, wouldn't it? Pretty retarded here today. Okay. Hop. Oh, I'm vertically challenged. Okay. All right, still have a couple more steps. We'll have one more vertical piece here for some rigidity to all of our siding products. And then we're going to uh, install our starter strip, do the first couple rows of vinyl, add some, some U-channels. We're going to add the last couple pieces of trim and throw in a few pieces of soffit for you so you understand all the process. Okay, so because we're on a slope, we just cut it and then slide it until it's stiff. Boom. Underneath there. You can use that to square everything off. I'm gonna add my holes. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is uh, I'm going to just give you a couple of tips. It's kind of like a crash course, beginner's course for doing siding. Just a couple of things to understand the process. Uh, again, I said it in the video, we did the windows out front. And if you haven't seen that, check it out. There is a lot to learn about siding. And I have a complete video on how to do that. We did our 1880 farmhouse from top to bottom, two and a half stories. That's the one to get learn how to do this properly. Here's the cheat. This is the metal track, okay? This is what starts all the horizontal pieces. So from the end to what I'm going to call the end, because we're going to put another piece of trim right here, okay? I'm going to mark that. That's the actual end. Now, I have to have something to fasten. So I'm going to take a little bit off. All right, I'm going to use these monster cutters because they are amazing. This is my starting strip. Very important that this thing goes in perfectly level, all the way across the whole building, all right? The way we achieve that is this. Understanding that the vinyl siding caps underneath here, and we want it to finish in exactly the same place that this one does, okay? So I'm gonna put this down at the same edge as this corner, which is a little higher than this, and that'll give me the perfect location. So all of our horizontal lines should line up. I'm gonna make a mark right here, okay? That's the top. We use our laser, we draw a horizontal line. This represents level. My line is right here, as soon as I get out of the way. And I can measure down from where the laser line is to the black line. And we're gonna go exactly six inches. So now what I do is I mark exactly six inches down from that laser. That's where the top of my metal goes, all the way across the whole building, okay? And that is how you level off your first row in the house. The power, more powerful the laser, the darker it is outside, the better result you're gonna get. But here, watch this, I can even rotate it and send the stronger strength over here, okay? And as long as I'm not sitting in the way, there it is, boom. Okay, I'll come over here now. I'll get the last one on, six inches from here, double check. Okay, there's my mark. That is how we do this. Whenever you're building anything over a long stretch, drop a laser line. It doesn't have to be where the mark is, okay? And then just create a measurement and you can duplicate that all over across the room. That'll save your bacon any day of the week. Now all we have to do is install this piece and I can finish showing you how to build it all right here. And I don't have to go all the way across because I know I can catch up on the other side. 
and then I'll show you a trick for how to get above the windows and doors and have it perfectly level when you get to the other end. I'm going to go all the way to the left. But remember, this is Florida, and things expand and contract, so I'm going to split this gap in half, leave room for some expansion, and add a screw in the middle. That's my spot. That's my spot. That's just absolutely brilliant. And again, here, that doesn't really have a place to attach to. That's okay. We're going to be all right. We need to get some J trims now. Now, before we can do any building, we have to add all of our J trims. And this is the end from the beginning. Same. We're going to do all upside the door, right to the top of this door here. We're going to go 82 inches. Come on. Under tape. Why am I using this one? I hate this tape. <laughs> I have some good ones here. Now, the easiest way to work with this stuff is not to measure it and then cut. It's to just get it close. Okay, so I need 82. So what I do is I just get it close. Cut it long on purpose. Okay, because this is something that you won't go crazy working with. You don't want a 12 foot piece of material around here. Our goal is to not cover up these screw holes or this material. We want to go up to it. We want to go to the height of the door. And because we're working above our head, we can't see what the height of that door is. We're going to take a marker on the top of this door. Okay? Knowing that whenever you do that, you're always going to be a little long. So the camera can see this. There's my mark. I'm going to make it a little bit short on purpose. Okay? Cut the front side and the back side. And then you just fold it over. Then you cut the balance. There we go. Now this should be perfect. All right, there we go. Now we're going to put this on with a few of these screws. What I'm doing is I'm actually putting the screw in that track right there. But because it's three quarters of an inch thick, it has no problem finding that gap. And no problem finding a place to secure inside the back of the gap. And now we have the end of the siding sorted out. Once we got our starter strip, we've got this channel, we've got this channel, we've got that channel. We're good to go with our first piece of siding. How exciting. All right, here we go. Oy. We're going to measure inside to inside, which basically is here. And then we're going to take off a quarter inch for expansion contraction. So my actual measurement is going to be 42 and a half in this situation. Okay, we're going to cut two of them. We're going to do it like this. Now, when we're going from inside a trim to inside a trim, we always measure on the body of the siding. Okay, if you're connecting a joint, you always measure from this because you always overlap a joint. That's for another day. We're going 42 and a half, which is right here. One quick little mark is all we need, just so that you can see the visual. I'm going to use my square. Mark this off. All right. Now, I'm going to use this rigid foam. Plywood is good. A 2x10 works really nice. Grinder. All right. This is why we use the continuous rim diamond blade for tile, because it cuts and melts at the same time, but it doesn't create any issues, right? Your backer is going to be great. Let's cut another one. Let's show you how this installs. Okay, so you can see this little piece that juts out actually is going to lock right here. And good siding has holes in the bottom. And these are drainage holes, okay? So water that gets in behind runs down and can still escape. That's important because Siding is not perfect at keeping water out. It actually is really poor at that because the wind can cause it to move around. Now, it's not going to lock in place, but it gives it resistance. It can, can only go so high. So what we're going to do is we use, use that starter track as a way of setting our height. And we're going to install the screw right here. We're going to take a little bit off so it has some movement. Very important. If it doesn't move, you're screwing the siding to this post frame. You're not hanging it. Hanging siding can grow. It can expand and contract. 
So always make sure you leave a little bit of a gap. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side with the intention. Tight, and back it off a little bit. Make sure it can move around. It's a great system. The other side can just float, it doesn't matter. The next piece, obviously we're gonna have an issue, right? Ah. So what we're gonna do is get it all the way to the side. All right, I'm gonna underneath. Understand, maybe you can see it better from this side. But this is actually like a, like a cap, okay? And the depth here is right to this point, right to this point in the trim. So I've got a good half an inch to play with here. So when I'm marking, I can look at the face, come down here, give myself something in the middle, all right? So that most of this material goes behind the window, but I'm not jammed in, all right? I'm also not making any allowance for expansion and traction there. I want to split the difference. There we go. Now, see that? That's too exposed. So we're gonna redo this. <laughs> okay. Now we got a location for our cut. We gotta pick the height. This is gonna lock underneath here. Okay, and the same thing, this track underneath here goes to that point. So that's the height right on the, right on the dent. Okay, so we're gonna cut there. We got our lines, and again, this grinder is the greatest tool. All right, and don't be afraid of making marks on these ribs, because the next piece is always gonna overlap it and cover it, all right? Let's get underneath that, get underneath that, and inside of that. Okay, beautiful. So now we have to lock it in. That's as easy as pushing it and having room. Okay, you see that didn't lock? I don't have enough room to lift it properly. Here's a mistake that you're gonna make. It's better to make it by cutting it too short than too long. So we didn't go deep enough to make enough room to lock, so. Sounds funny, doesn't it? It's a little bit un un unnerving, isn't it? I'm like, I don't want to trust it with my eyeballs. Okay, come on, baby. Let's get in here. There we go. Oh, it's so much better to do this on a warm day than a cold one. Here we go. Now, let's see if we got room to lock it. You'll hear it lock. There we go. Yeah, there's no more, no more movement there. And I push down, it won't disengage. That's how you know. Whew. Okay, to be sure, we have the luxury. This is just because I don't trust my grinder here. Using a new tool for the first time, I'm not gonna trust it with my eyeballs. All right. We can actually attach the siding to the fin just to give it all some stability and rigidity. Okay. This is where the production element comes in. We wanna do a bunch of pieces, and if we built this right, they should all be about the same height, same length, sorry. So we're looking at giving it a little bit of room and a little bit of room. Eight inches is perfect, eight inches is perfect. Okay, now each piece of siding goes from rib to the bottom. So nine inches. So let's see how many pieces we need. Nine goes into 47, five times. We'll do five times eight. And then this one is five inch. Love making things square. So five pieces at eight and five, eight, five pieces, yeah, five pieces at eight and five pieces at five. Wow, let's get to work. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is show you how to install on each side of the window and then connect. Okay, make sure it's all level on the, with the next piece. This is a trick, so don't go away. Here we go. Uh, and I apologize for making this so easy. 
You ever played Plinko? <laughs> oh, just make sure they're facing the right way. Right, lock it in. Now this has got all kinds of flexibility here, right? They're all locked together. So what we do is we don't add any fasteners till we're done the other side of these small channels. And then we measure and cut the top piece. And then we put the fastener on once we've locked it all together. That gives you the ability to level across multiple different surfaces. That's the secret to winning this game. When you have two verticals this close together, you don't need fasteners. It's hard enough to get this in, let alone pull it out. That's why we drop it in from the top. Because trying to put it in this way, well, that's almost an impossibility, right? Without breaking it. So it's not going to come out either. Right? Now you can see the wisdom here. It also allows you to be pretty quick because you can do all your multiple cuts first. And then bring in your siding. There we go. Now we just bring it down. Make sure we go over top of it. Lock it. Lock it in. Lock it in. There we go. Lots of flexibility. Now we got to see if we're going to need one more sliver or if we're ready to cut our next piece all the way across. Remember, nine inches is the magic number. And we're measuring from here, right? Well, uh, five inches. Okay, so we're looking five inches from the bottom. We've got to cut across. Wow. In the interest of time, I'm not going to get too fussy. I'm going to cut one piece of siding all the way across to pick up all of the verticals, okay? Because we started at the same horizontal line off a laser, we'll be able to finish within one horizontal line, give or take a millimeter or so, right? And we have all this flexibility, so it doesn't matter. That way we can connect all the top with one piece of siding, because it's 11 and a half feet, they come 12 feet in the box, and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. You're going to look like a pro. Trust me, pros aren't that patient. They'd cut this thing in half and split seam it above the door to give themselves some mercy. But we like to do better work than the pros because we care about our homes more than they do. And they get paid to show up, get done, get the hell out. And you're getting paid by finishing it and be perfect every time. And that's the difference. So now that you understand how this is done, that's enough of the tutorial on the vinyl siding. Let's show you how to finish up with the skirt underneath because once you know how to do the skirt and the vinyl siding, you can finish any house in the neighborhood. All right. Now when it comes to finishing off underneath, you can see here we got block, we have a crawl space, obviously we need some airflow, um, but along this front we want to make it look finished. And I'm not going to try to put in some kind of facade stone. This is a double wide trailer after all, we don't need to use materials that are $30 a square foot. And so we're going to be returning uh, about 11 and a half, let's call it. We're going to measure down 11 and a half, it's right there, it's right there. I appreciate anybody in the siding business who wants to miter the joint. And this is how you cut the joint square, all right? And then you can just fold it inside of itself, okay? And that looks like garbage, right? But when you miter a joint, you only want to miter one side. Keep the other side square if it's inside of itself, all right? And if anything, trim back the little piece on the back here so it fits nice, okay? That gives you a good look, okay? So we're going to finish that one. We're going to put that uh, right into that corner, right across here. And then we're going to want to finish it just shy of here. Nothing ever has to be exactly the length. Remember, all of this stuff is going to swell when August comes around. <laughs> uh, here's our mark. Maybe a little bit on the short side. It's going to go inside the other trim anyway. Right? Here we go. Now we're going to pinch that. Set that in. Set our miter where we like it. We're going to put a fastener right here in the middle. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We also want to have a piece of the same material. Hey, oh, cheapers. Ah. Going across the top, I'm going to measure by hand here, right 
in here. Okay. All those sirens in the background make me nervous. It's like, did they find me? When everything is cut square, it can be a problem, so don't be afraid to trim the backside. All right? This is going to be used just as a way to finish the top cut. So our new piece of material is going to go inside here and then down inside of here. I'm going to throw a screw right here. All right. That's a nice clean look, if I do say so myself. <laughs> the secret is to get a measurement and cut our metal. I'm going to go from the ground to about the middle of the top piece and that'll give us a measurement that gives us a little bit of flexibility but some rigidity at the same time. Eleven and a quarter. All right. Oh, Eleven and a quarter it is. Now, just so this makes sense, it comes in a 12 foot piece. I'm going to cut a three or four foot section. If I'm 11 and a quarter, let's call it a foot each. I'm going to cut a four and a bit foot section so I can get at least four pieces out of it. I'll bring it over here where it's manageable and then we'll demonstrate how to finish this off. I cut this with the snips just to demonstrate. See how the compresses? That causes compressive damage, right? And it may or may not be hidden. So when you're working with this stuff, trying to use snips can be difficult. So when you're using snips, you want to actually cut each surface and change your angle as you go just to the tip, come back up, then come across. If you just try to crush through it all, that's what you get. It's a big crushing mess. All right, now, 11 and a quarter. Boom. I'm going to give you a couple of tips here. One is when you're using a marker, always have your triangle about an eighth of an inch to the left of what the mark you want, because the marker never makes the line where you want it to. It's not a fine pencil. Okay, that's one tip. Second tip is you might want to try the grinder. Now, I know it's aluminum, and this isn't a metal blade, but this is a pretty thin gauge aluminum. You might be surprised the results you get. Perfect every time. Now, soffit pieces like this are what they're called. Um, they have a tongue and they'll have a groove section. This opens up a little bit, okay? So they lock into each other. So if you want to start with the tongue, you can. Now you see this? Problem, right? Except this is J-trim and it is somewhat flexible. And until we get it all really locked and loaded in here, we'll go down to the deeper pot spot first, come back. That's actually easier because it's opening up, right? Here we go. We got that installed. Now let's get the height for the next piece. Ah, 11 and a half. Yeah, that'll work. All right. 11 and a half and And the reason I love it so much is because it doesn't crush. It doesn't curl the ends. It doesn't cause any damage to the product. So it installs so much easier. We'll go down here, drop that in. Yeah, we're gonna have to work this one a little bit. That's all right. There we go. And we come across. Look how easy this is gonna slide into the groove because it's not damaged. Okay, that's it. Now it looks like one piece. Yeah, I know. Oh, what about the very end? That's gonna be tricky, right? You can cheat a little bit with your cut and make it so it just barely fits. You can also really manipulate this. Okay, see this? Take your trims out. All right, manipulate this, slide it in, and then you can pop this all back together again when you're done. Okay, there's lots of ways to finish this off. Ha, <sighs> now you get all the secrets that you need so that you can finish this up. Here we are, we're up ready for the top, okay? This is where it gets tricky, and I want to install my J-trim across the top of the door as well, just to tie in. All right, but instead of doing it here, I'm doing it right here nice and tight, because I want to be able to divert water. Now, let me show you how to do this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut three quarters of an inch front and back of the same side, bend it over. That way this actually hooks into the side. 
Okay, we'll do it on both ends. All right, so now you can see this. We'll hook it in there and we'll hook it in here. We'll add in a couple of screws for good measure. But the point of this is really about water diversion. I'm not really that worried about it in this scenario, but I'm just showing you. So if it's on your house, that's how we lock siding together. Okay, fair enough. Now I'm gonna leave this floating in case I wanna replace this door at some point in the future. You'll be able to just pop this right out, change the door, and then pop it right back in again. C'est la vie. The next piece of siding is one piece, end to end. We have to get a pretty accurate measurement here, minus three eighths maybe, so we can have a gap on each side. So, first step here is to get an accurate measurement. And I have learned over the years, if you want an accurate measurement, you want to find something fixed that you can pull against so that your tape is nice and straight. So we're going to measure right from the outside post, and then we're going to subtract the thickness of that post later. I'm using my right hand to just keep nice tension on it. And I'm going to fold this over right onto the inside of that trim. And that number is 129 and a half exactly. Sorry, a quarter exactly. 129 and a quarter. So I'm going to cut my siding just a little smaller than 129. Give me that 3 8 so I can split the gap. I'm going to write it down. Look at that. That's how it's done. All right, 129 minus a hair. Now in step one, we're just going to get it in between the J trim on each end, far above where we need to install this. And once we have it in, in the trims, somebody doesn't know how to measure. Oh, I forgot to take off the width. Yep, I'm an idiot. There we go. Woo, now we got some wind. Okay guys, so here's the whole width, right? Minus three eighths. I forgot, oh, it was on the other side of that post. Let me make my mark. I want to mark right here, in the middle of this piece of J trim. Okay, that's all the flexibility I'm gonna need. I measure once and I cut twice. Measure once, cut twice, instead of the other way around. Measure twice, that just means you're an idiot and you don't know how to use a tape measure. That's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Okay, we got the number, but just in case you were stupid, let's do it again. Now in a scenario like this, I'm gonna incorporate a clamp because here's my thumb right on the edge of this trim. Let's take a look at this, right? I'm pushed all the way to the right and I can slide all the way to the left, right? That's a significant difference. So we wanted to split that difference, clamp it, and now we'll make our marks. Okay, this is really key. Whenever you're making multiple cuts on the same piece of siding, you want to be square to the product and you want to use a square to draw your lines. For instance, behind this is right on this line. Okay, so that's that line and that line, this part of the profile, right here where that square is. So I'm going to get right beside it. I'm going to take off a little bit of mercy and I'm going to make my mark with the square. Same thing here. That's where the, my edge of the, is on the, behind the window trim. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of mercy, make my mark and cut on that. Here's my J trim. I'm gonna be cutting inside of that with a little bit of mercy. Okay. And I'm also gonna mark which direction I'm removing material from. Trust me, when you get that on the ground, you're gonna to wanna to have a bit of a guide or you'll end up cutting out the wrong piece and you'll have to start all over again. That's the inside of the door, edge of the window. That's where I wanna cut. And then over here, uh huh. All right, now we have to measure. Now, remember, all of these are somewhat accordion, okay? So let's start with them a little bit relaxed as we're gonna cut with two numbers. I'm gonna start with this one somewhat relaxed. I'm gonna take a measurement from the underside of my trim, underside of the siding, to the, the rib here. It's five and five eighths. I'm gonna mark that here. Five and five eighths. And now, I'm gonna mark here to the underside of the rib. I can get it all the way up to five and, a, and three eighths. So five and five eighths works here as well. So that makes this uh, different because of this trim. What I wanna do, I'll do that one last. I'm gonna get these windows done first. Five and three quarters, 
five and five eighths, we can get there. All right. All right, let's see if we can get here with this one. That's yeah, tight. It's also a little bit out of alignment. Oh yeah, we're good. So we're gonna do five and five eighths for all of it. But for this door, we're gonna do something a little different now. Now we're gonna stay above the door jam, knowing I'm gonna have a little more thickness there. I'm more like five and three quarters. So plus a little bit more mercy, I'm gonna go all the way up five and seven eighths. I'm actually gonna go to six here. Okay, it's not always gonna be perfect and exact. Remember our ground is on a slope. We try to level it all off, but you have to cut according to how it fits. The key here is to have this piece locked into all four of these runs of siding and make sure that it finishes off one horizontal piece. If you don't have the accordion effect, you're gonna have to have a split above the door and you're gonna have this installed off center and crooked and weird. You're gonna see a line going like that. It'll scream, okay? So now we're gonna cut this. We'll put the J trim back up and we'll snap this plane in place and you'll see how nice that look is. We'll cut all of this out. Just a quick note for safety. Guys, take a look at your blade on your grinder, okay? If it isn't perfectly straight, if it has any cupping or warping, throw it out and get a new wheel. It means you've overheated it or dropped it and it's this close to breaking off and flying in your face. All right, so every time you pick up this tool, double check. You might've set it down careful. Someone might've come along and kicked it and then put it back. Uh, that is, I don't care if you got your guard on there or not, it's a dangerous tool. If your blade isn't in good shape, Is one flimsy piece of siding. <laughs> That's all right. We'll have some fun getting it in. Now we're going to stick this on. All right, for good measure. Let's start with over here. And we'll go from above everything and then try to lock it all in place as we go. I am feeling very interested about this. I did not do something right. What did I do wrong? So, yeah. I might have measured something upside down backwards, I think. Trust me, when you get that on the ground, you're gonna to wanna to have a bit of a guide or you'll end up cutting out the wrong piece and you'll have to start all over again. Starts and then I can't sit down. All right, um, I've done something horribly wrong and I can't tell. That was a great learning opportunity. Here's a great learning opportunity. Somewhere along the way, I measured something wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two separate templates by cutting this on half, okay? And then we can identify what's wrong. Oh, this is where everybody wants to film when I make a mistake, right? <laughs> this is where I'm catching my trim. This is where my depth should be on my J trim. So that is obviously way off. Okay. If I caught my trim here, I'm still way too high. So I'm going to go um, minus a good inch. Okay. And that's about the same. So minus one inch. Over on this side, same thing. I gotta go minus one inch. All the way across. It's a rather simplistic mistake. This one's actually okay. Huh. Huh. 
Well, this one's actually not, not terrible. I'm going to just adjust my template a quarter of an inch here. Okay, so now I'm going to take a brand new piece of siding. I'm going to cut this template, and then I'm going to go and draw it all out again. Cut it again. I mean, what are you going to do? Leave it looking ugly? <laughs> Here we go again for the first time. <laughs> ah, right away that's looking better. So many moving parts. Okay. Well, I'll be darned. That worked. <laughs> ah, let's take a look. It's a little dirty, but there you go. <laughs> See, I knew what I was talking about. I just can't measure. <laughs> All right. So now we have uh, one piece of siding tying together two different walls, right? Started off a laser level left all the middle pieces floating so you have mercy and then cut and measure till you get the piece right that's all nice and simple right it's basic but it works now when I tie that together um, there's gonna be nothing to keep me from finishing off the top I'm gonna have to add a couple of vertical posts because I want to have a couple of screw surfaces and that is a that's gonna be no big deal okay wow let's see if we can get one more piece in yes We'll get one more full piece in here before we have to go any further. I believe it is ten and a half altogether. Bam, that is exactly one piece of siding for the top. All right, fantastic. The same thing as last time here. Lee, did you know that? Ah, huh. Wow. You know it's getting late. <laughs> All right. Hook. Okay. I know you guys don't want to watch the rest of this. <laughs> what I'm going to do is uh, I'm basically going to be taking a measurement coming over four feet right at this point and then measuring up to the ceiling. So I'm going to go from one inch off to whatever that number is. And I'm going to take another piece of siding and line up that angle and mark the whole piece and we'll install the next one. Piece of cake. Ah. All right, beautiful. Same trick, we'll do the other little trim here. Uh, listen guys, if you have a major project going on and you need help, consider joining our membership program. Uh, just hit the join button on the screen on your computer or on your camera. But we would love to have your support, so consider joining. And uh, while you're there, you get access to our live shows and you can join the chat and you get answers to your questions. Remember, if you are going to DIY renovation, you're going to do a better job you're going to save a ton of money, you're going to build equity in your home, and you're going to set yourself up for success in your retirement. You can do it, and I can help you get there. Cheers, till next time.